In today's video, we'll dive deep into the latest market setup surrounding AMC's stock, the increasingly critical mother of all short squeezes indicator, and how a particular market metric, the reverse repo balance, might be signaling an unprecedented liquidity issue. We'll look at how this situation has evolved, what it could mean for stocks like AMC and GME, and why the unfolding events are causing significant waves in both retail and institutional investing circles. Hey, welcome to AMC Daily. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell so you never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. But everyone, remember this is not a financial advice video. Starting with the reverse repo indicator, let's break down what this is and why it matters so much to those closely watching the AMC short squeeze potential. Reverse repurchase agreements, or reverse repos, have become a crucial measure for liquidity among large financial institutions. In essence, reverse repos allow the Federal Reserve to borrow cash from banks overnight, with banks receiving high-quality collateral, typically U.S. Treasuries, in exchange. When we see a decrease in reverse repo balances, like the drop under $155 billion recently, signifies less cash circulating in the system, impacting the liquidity available to institutions. So why should we care about the reverse repo dropping to this level? This decline directly affects hedge funds and financial institutions, especially those exposed to high-risk bets such as shorting AMC. Traditionally, high reverse repo balances indicate robust liquidity, meaning banks and hedge funds have ready access to cash to maintain their positions and cover risks. Now, with reverse repo balances falling below significant thresholds, for instance, $200 billion, it tells us liquidity is tightening, raising the chance of margin calls on these risky positions. To put this into perspective, think about when the reverse repo level started climbing to unprecedented heights, nearing $2 trillion. This was around the same time AMC and GME stocks came into the spotlight, igniting the short squeeze phenomenon. Hedge funds shorting these stocks required substantial cash reserves to maintain their positions and meet collateral requirements. Consequently, reverse repos skyrocketed as institutions relied heavily on Federal Reserve funds to sustain short positions, synthetic shares, and leverage. However, in today's market climate, the reverse repo has dramatically decreased from $2 trillion to a new low of $155 billion. This plummet in available liquidity is crucial signaling that financial institutions now face tighter capital constraints, a development that could impact the short-selling narrative around AMC. One of the core indicators within the mother-of-all short squeezes theory is that when reverse repo participation drops below specific levels, such as $200 billion with 45 participating members, or even lower, we might see what many retail investors are hoping for, institutional margin calls. The theory goes further to suggest that if participants fall below 35, family offices could be forced to make margin calls, while even larger institutional calls could start when levels fall below $100 billion. At that point, banks might start recalling equities tied to risky bets. This potential scenario becomes especially interesting in light of recent events. For example, the German banking sector has reduced its exposure to U.S. loans resulting in bond market instability and exacerbating concerns about illiquidity. This move suggests that even overseas institutions are preparing for the worst. Why is this important? It's all interconnected. The lack of liquidity in one part of the financial ecosystem can cascade into other areas, eventually impacting U.S. banks and hedge funds that have significant exposure to risky assets like AMC shorts. When liquidity dries up, the likelihood of margin calls and forced liquidations rises, leading to a potential wave of asset sell-offs and equity recalls, what some refer to as a fire sale. Further underscoring this concern, institutional investors are increasingly worried about market volatility and illiquidity. Many banks, hedge funds, and family offices are tightly intertwined with AMC's and GME's short positions. Even if an event or metric isn't directly related to AMC, it can still impact these positions due to the interconnectedness of financial institutions. For example, a bank may not directly short AMC but could lend capital to hedge funds that do. 
When that bank faces liquidity challenges, it affects the hedge fund's capacity to maintain short positions, adding to the domino effect of financial strain across the board. Next, let's address AMC's current stock setup. Observers note that AMC remains in a volatility squeeze configuration, indicating a potential breakout point. Over the summer, AMC's trading zone was relatively stable, and September showed promise as a possible breakout month. Now, however, we're nearing a confirmation of that breakout. Analysts are particularly optimistic about AMC's upcoming earnings, especially following the favorable reports from other industry players like IMAX and Cinemark. Emacs, for instance, recently saw a 10% boost in its stock post-earnings, a positive signal for AMC's outlook. However, AMC investors should remain cautious, as positive earnings do not necessarily guarantee a corresponding increase in stock price due to ongoing negative media coverage aimed at deterring retail investors. What can we conclude from AMC's fundamentals even in the face of potential manipulation and negative press? It's essential to look beyond daily price fluctuations, as these do not always reflect true value or performance. In AMC's case, fundamental health is a more reliable indicator. The company's leadership, including CEO Adam Aaron, has been transparent about AMC's financial standing, indicating no bankruptcy risk for at least the next two years. This assurance is critical, as it counters the narrative that short sellers might be waiting for AMC to go bankrupt, a scenario that's now unlikely in the near term. Consequently, short sellers face limited options. They must either wait for retail investors to capitulate or hope for a significant decline in AMC's business fundamentals. In parallel to these AMC-focused events, prominent investors are making notable moves that align with broader market concerns. Recently, Warren Buffett, a legendary figure in investing, has shifted Berkshire Hathaway's strategy to accumulate an unprecedented cash balance, halting stock buybacks altogether. This is significant. Berkshire has paused its buyback program and now holds a staggering $325 billion in cash reserves. Notably, in Q3 of 2024, Berkshire repurchased no stock compared to hundreds of millions or even billions in prior quarters. This decision suggests that Buffett sees the market as overpriced and likely bracing for a downturn. Given his historical track record of stock buybacks during undervaluation periods, Buffett's choice to hold cash indicates that he foresees a potential market correction or crash. The broader market's overvaluation isn't limited to just a few stocks. Major players like NVIDIA, which experienced a meteoric rise, are now under scrutiny. NVIDIA has reached an astonishing market cap, driven largely by demand in artificial intelligence, AI, and semiconductor sectors. However, recent news involving one of NVIDIA's significant clients, SMCI, raised eyebrows when their auditor EY resigned over integrity concerns. This development casts doubt not only on NVIDIA, but also on the tech sector's stability, where companies rely on inflated valuations for collateral and leverage. If NVIDIA faces backlash or a sharp decline in valuation, it could trigger broader financial repercussions across the market. In light of these evolving factors, it becomes clear that we're witnessing a volatile moment in financial history. Between diminishing liquidity, potential margin calls, an inflated stock market, and heightened scrutiny on major players, the possibility of a substantial market correction seems increasingly likely. For AMC and GME, the interconnected financial risks present a unique opportunity for the mother of all short squeezes scenario to play out. Should these conditions persist, we might see short sellers face mounting challenges to maintain their positions, setting the stage for what retail investors have long awaited, the unwinding of massive short positions. To summarize, while the current landscape is fraught with complexity and risk, This situation could pave the way for a significant shift in market dynamics, potentially igniting the ultimate short squeeze in AMC and GME. Watching the reverse repo balances, understanding liquidity flows, and observing major institutional moves will be vital for anyone invested in or tracking AMC's journey. As always, it's critical to approach these topics with informed perspective, patience, and awareness of the broader economic trends shaping the future of financial markets. Guys, that's all we have for you today. What is your opinion about AMC stock? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.